Hey, welcome back you guys to our unit on volcanoes and earthquakes. Uh, most students really like this unit, so here we go. Uh, earthquakes and volcanoes, your unit. Your topic today is volcano locations and magma composition. Composition just means what something's made of, right? So magma, what is magma made of and how does it affect volcanoes? All right, day one of four. Today you will understand the three locations where volcanoes can be found. Okay, you will know how magma composition, what magma is made of, affects whether a volcano will be explosively or erupt quietly. You will know how silica affects the viscosity or thickness of magma. Think of viscosity as thickness. All right, quick write. Okay, for five points. Make sure you're doing your quick writes for five easy points. All right, have you or your family ever visited a volcano? If so, where was it? Okay, describe the experience. How do you think volcanoes grow in size? What do you think volcanoes are made of? Where do you think volcanoes form at? What do you think makes a volcano erupt with deadly explosive force? And then, why do you think soda cans explode when you shake them up? Okay, these last two questions kind of have to deal, deal with each other here. Okay, remember, answer in two to three sentences, please. Okay, here we go. Go ahead and pause this anytime you need more time to write, okay? No hurry. Take your time. All right, so volcanoes. A volcano is an opening in the Earth's surface, right, that often forms a mountain when layers of lava and ash build up over time. So we got layers of lava here that cool to rock, right? So boom, new layer, okay? And then sometimes it's not just... Lava, it's ash. So ash falls down and we get new layers okay, of ash here. So layers of lava and ash. So what is a volcano for your first question? Remember the question goes on the left hand side. The answer goes on the right hand side. Okay, this is the answer. Okay. Use the answer bank to complete the word that to complete to use the answer bank, excuse me, to complete the sentence here. Okay, make sure you're writing these answer bank words up in the answer bank section or you will not get credit for your notes. Okay, go ahead and pause this please while you write. I'm going to move on here. All right. So, volcano locations. Volcanoes form at plate boundaries. Okay, mostly divergent and convergent. Okay, so divergent here, volcanoes form at divergent plate boundaries, where plates pull apart as magma rises. An example would be Iceland, in convergent plate boundaries, where plates collide and one plate subducts, feeding the volcanoes at the surface. That plate melts, feeding the volcanoes at the surface. An example would be Mount St. Helens up in Washington. Okay, and hot spots, something we haven't really talked about before. Hawaii formed over what's called a hot spot. A steady, constant flow, steady meaning it's consistent flow of magma that's rising to the surface to form volcanoes. An example is good old Hawaii. So, let's take a quick look here at, okay, Iceland. What's happening here in Iceland? Well, divergent plate boundary here. Plates are moving apart and you get these cracks in the ground, okay, and these volcanoes form. So, right here, Iceland, right? Okay, a big volcano. Iceland is one big, essentially, volcano. All right, so volcano locations, divergent plate boundary, Iceland. You're going to have to know the examples on the test. So here's a picture of Iceland. Iceland so far to the north. You get these beautiful displays of volcanic eruptions along with the aurora lights, the aurora borealis is here. Okay, if you go to Iceland, make sure you visit the hot springs because Iceland gets their energy from geothermal energy, heat from the ground. Okay, they don't burn coal or they don't burn fossil fuels. They get their energy to fuel their homes. All their energy to, to power their homes, okay, comes from geothermal energy. And they also bathe. This is called the Blue Lagoon. So if you ever go to Iceland, go check out the Blue Lagoon. All right, another place volcanoes form at is convergent plate boundaries here. Okay, up, up off the coast of Oregon and Washington, this little tiny plate called the Juan de Fuca plate is being pushed underneath the North American plate. And if you recall, as that plate goes down, it melts due to friction and heat. And that melt, 
that melted plate rises here to form volcanoes. Okay, so volcanoes form at convergent plate boundaries, where one plate collides, where the plates collide, and one plate subducts. Subducts means one plate is pushed underneath the other, feeding the volcanoes at the surface as it melts. An example here is Mount St. Helens. So. But Mount St. Helens is, is just one of many of the Cascade volcanoes. Look at Lassen here in Northern California, the nearest volcano to us. Mount Shasta. I used to snowboard Mount Shasta in high school. Okay, Crater Lake. Okay, Crater Lake here, Three Sisters, Mount Jefferson, Mount Hood, Mount Rainier. Okay, so all of these volcanoes here, all of these volcanoes here formed above a subduction zone at a convergent plate boundary. So from Northern California up to Canada lies a series of volcanoes called the Cascade Mountain Range. The Juan de Fuca Plate subducts under the North American Plate, forming a series of volcanoes. As the Juan de Fuca Plate subducts, it melts, feeding the volcanoes at the surface, forming the Cascade Volcanoes. Okay. So, and the third location is what we call a hot spot. Out in the middle of the Pacific Ocean, okay, is... The Hawaiian Islands. And the Hawaiian Islands formed over what's called a hot spot. Here, a constant steady flow of magma rises to the surface to form volcanoes. So look, a constant steady flow of magma rises to the surface. But look, plates move. They move about as fast as your fingernails grow, centimeters per year. And as that plate moves over the hot spot, it leaves behind a chain of volcanoes. Okay, so here's the hot spot. And as the plate moves this way, it leaves behind volcanoes that get progressively older. So the newest volcano here is the Big Island. And as you go this way, Maui, Oahu, Kauai, the, the, the islands get older. They're no longer over the hot spot. In fact, they're shrinking, okay, because they're no longer active. So here's how a Hawaiian hot spot works. You have, here's the hot spot. The hot spot does not move. Remember, the plate does move, though. So... You get a plate, you get a volcanic island here, okay? And over time, the plate moves, right? Over millions of years, right? So you get older and older volcanoes. The old volcanoes are over here. The newest volcano is right here. It's over the hot spot. These volcanoes are no longer active. These islands, these volcanic islands are done, okay? Because they are no longer over the hot spot. But the volcano over the island, the volcanic island over the hot spot, like the big island of Hawaii, is still erupting today. Okay? So, what are the three locations? Where are the three locations volcanoes form? That is your question that goes in the question section on the left hand side. Make sure you're writing the questions for full credit. And then here is your answer the three plates here. Make sure you write the examples down. Use the answer bank to determine which word best completes the sentence here. Remember to write your answer bank your words, your answer bank words in the answer bank section, both in the answer bank section and in your notes. Okay? Go ahead and pause this while you write. I'm going to move on. Okay. Ring of fire. Convergent plate boundaries are located all around the Pacific Rim. Convergent plate boundaries are all around here, the Pacific Ocean. Okay, Because of this, we get a chain of volcanoes around the Pacific Ocean here. We call this the Ring of Fire. So because, vo so because convergent plate boundaries are located around the Pacific Rim, we get okay, volcanoes located around the Pacific Ocean. These volcanoes make up the Ring of Fire. So what is the Ring of Fire? Okay, once again, question on the left-hand side, answer on the right-hand side. Use the answer bank to best complete the sentence. I'm going to move on. All right. So, there's two types of eruptions. Some volcanic eruptions are explosive and violent, okay, while others are non-explosive. So, let's look at Mount St. Helens here. Mount St. Helens was explosive, okay? It was deadly explosive. It erupted with great force killing people, killing about 60 people in the area, even though geologists told people to get out of there. Okay, Hawaii, though, is what we call non-explosive. It just kind of bubbles. Okay, Kind of like a hot tub or something, right? Those bubbles really should tell you something. Okay, So Hawaiian is a non-explosive volcano, and Mount St. Helens is an explosive volcano. So what are the two types of volcanic eruptions? 
left hand side, answer on the right hand side. Okay. All right, so magma composition. There's two types of magma we're going to look at. There's a few more, but generally we're going to, these are the two types. Okay. Why do some volcanoes erupt explosively and others non-explosively? It has to do with three factors. The amount of trapped gases in the magma, okay, the viscosity or thickness of the magma, and the silica content. Okay. So what factors make volcanoes explosive? Right? Question on the left hand side, answer on the right hand side. Once again, use the answer bank to determine which word best completes the sentence here. Okay. Go ahead and pause this. I'm going to move on. Okay. So rhyolitic magma here is high in silica. It has a high viscosity. It means it's thick. It doesn't like to flow very fast. It's very thick. It's like toothpaste, right? This traps gases. This magma is so thick that it traps gases and gases cannot escape. Okay. Let me go back for a second. Because it traps gases, those gases, the pressure builds up and it produces explosive eruptions like Mount St. Helens here. Okay. Basaltic magma here is dark in color. Okay. Mafic. And is low in silica and therefore it flows like water almost when it's really hot. Okay. Because it flows, it releases gases producing non-explosive relatively quiet eruptions. That's why really no one has died in Hawaii. Hawaii has actually been erupting since 1950. And for the most part, no one has ever died in Hawaii. Okay? Because it produces non-explosive quiet eruptions. The magma flows like fl very fluid, like water almost. Okay? So what is the difference between rhyolitic and basaltic magma? Okay? Make sure you get all of this down. Okay? And use your answer bank once again. Go ahead and pause this while you write. I'm going to move on. Okay. So, quiz yourself. Who's been listening? Which one has the most silica? This is the magma. This is the chemicals they're made of. Basaltic and rhyolitic. Which magma releases gases? Which magma contains more silica? You don't have to write any of this down. Just think about it here real quick. Spend a second. Okay. We have rhyolitic here. You have basaltic. Look at the silica content. Okay. All right. So we're going to go ahead and summarize. I made a nice table here for you to fill out in your notes. The two types of magma, basaltic and rhyolitic. Is it explosive? Okay. Yes or no. High in silica. Yes or no. Traps gases. Yes or no. High. Oops. Sorry about that. Higher low in viscosity. Okay, high or low in your examples here. Please fill this table out. It's a very handy table to have with you. All right. So go ahead and pause this while you write. Congratulations. You're done with day one of four of your volcano and earthquake notes. Have a great evening. Don't forget to pause it.